Good morning, my dear brethren. May the Lord bless you and welcome to today's devotional. We're going to be going to Hebrews chapter 2 as of verse 1 to 4. And the word of the Lord says, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word is spoken through angels, proved as steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard it? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. My dear brethren, the author of this precious letter is uh, talking about something very important and something very necessary that we all have to have very clear. The law, when the Lord gave it to the people of Israel on Mount Sinai through his servant Moses, the, this, the deployment that the display that the Lord made so that that marvelous act of receiving in, in, in the desert the word of God was tremendous. There were thunders, lightnings, sounds of trumpets, the voice of God was heard. That is, all of those who were there present, those witnesses, knew very well that something very big was happening there something very important, nothing more, nothing less, that God was giving them the law, the instructions and concrete law, what we know as the Torah, to people so that they will know how to behave. What is it that God wants from them? To teach them to obey, to give them instructions, specific instructions about what God expected of them and how they had to behave, both in the desert and later, when they entered to take possession of the promised land, the land of Cana. If that law, that after all was a shadow and was a means to bring us to the Messiah, was presented with a series of powerful manifestations uh, from our God, how much more do we have to have respect and care regarding the gospel that we have received first preached by the Lord Jesus Christ and later by the rest of the disciples. The salvation, as we have said before, for us is free, although Christ paid a very high price for it. He shed his blood to deliver his life. I repeat, salvation is free for us. We don't have to do anything to save ourselves because he already did it all for us. But that does not mean that from that encounter with him, from our new birth, from our conversion, we will live lives with a relaxed life, just arm crossed without making an effort, with taking care of our relationship with the Lord? Absolutely not. The Bible says, and we have read it very clearly this morning, that we have to take care our, with our salvation, with fear and trembling to dedicate time every day to our communion, to our relationship with the Lord. The fact that the salvation is free does not mean that it does not have a high cost. What happens is that that price that is very high that we human beings couldn't have paid, he paid it for us, shedding his own and precious and powerful blood so that you and I can live in victory, in peace, and with the blessing of God. But it is our duty, it is our responsibility to take care of that salvation, to abstain from all those things that do not honor or glorify the Lord, to filter, filter all the conversations, to uh, select wisely our friends, not to put us in environments that could contaminate our communion with the Lord and expose us to unnecessary dangers. The Christian life carries out many responsibilities. Some do not like this. Their responsibilities 
they only want to hear about the privileges and the blessings, how God, when we pray, He hears and responds us, how the Lord is always with us, protecting us from all danger and all evil, and all of that is good. But I would like for you today to think also in the many responsibilities that we have as Christians. First and foremost is to maintain a life, our communion, our relationship with the Lord, to renew ourselves every day, not to stagnate, not to settle for what we have already received or learned, because there is a lot from now, there is a lot to learn and a lot, a long way to go, many things to do and to conquer for the Lord. In second place, to save our testimony uh, in face of the world so that we can live the things that we preach and we teach. That people will not point their finger at us, accusing us of living a double life, of not living what we say with that we believe. And above all things, the most important thing is to keep the holiness, that is to live according to the will of God, and not only to turn God to ask Him for things like many th people do, that they only pray and they only remember God when they, something hurts, when they have a problem, or when they want something like a, a very spoiled child that wants to throw tantrums and cry because they do not get what his mother said that he wasn't going to give him. My dear brethren, it is time to mature. It is time to grow up not to turn solely and exclusively to God as if it was a kind of magician, a kind of a Santa Claus from which we ask things and he has the obligation to give us everything that we ask for. That is not the evidence of a mature Christian. The Lord teaches us that we have to take care of ourselves, we have to mature, we have to change our way of behaving, our way of speaking, our way of living, and not living as worldly, calling ourselves Christian not participating in customs and traditions and celebrations that for the world are very important, but for us Christians, they should no longer have any importance at this point in time. The goal of our lives should be only and exclusively to please God and not to please ourselves or others, because incidentally pleasing God, we're going to live very happy life and satisfied life. We're going to live in peace and we're gonna not ha we're not gonna have that insatisfaction that we have even though we call ourselves Christians. We no longer care so much if God grants us our request, because above all these things, whether He grants us them or not, our dreams or objectives, and we have our own personal goal fulfilled. Above all those things, our goal in life is to serve God, as He wants when He wants and where He wants. He is the one who orders, we the ones who obey. He is the one who guides and we are the one who follow. In other words, we have already surrendered to the sovereignty of, of God, to the government of God. He is our head, He is our authority, and what He commands, we will say, Amen, Lord. May Your will be done and not mine in my life. This implies an effort on our part. This implies sacrifice, of course, and this implies that on our part we're going to pay a price not to obtain salvation. That is already being very clear. Salvation, we must not add anything because the sacrifice of Christ was complete, perfect, and forever. But the personal effort that we have to do is essential. Is The growth, the maturity, depends largely on us. Therefore, today, we will do our part. Always the Lord will be faithful, and He will never fold His arms. But He also wants to see in us an effort that we are able and willing to obey Him, to submit to Him, to close our mouth when we have to do that, and open when we have to open it, to obey the Lord, even though we understand or not, because it is not about understanding everything that the Lord is asking us to do or whatever He's not giving us. Here it is about to enjoy in every time and every circumstance in which we find ourselves, because the will of God is pleasant, holy, and perfect. And when He says no, He's saying no for some reason, because He wants the best for us. We're going to trust God. We are going to uh, be calm 
knowing that the Lord has the best for our lives. The best that we can do in these moments is to pray together and to present this day to the Lord so that He will keep us and He will help us to understand that the best thing that we can do in our lives is to fulfill the will, the will of God. Let's take care of our salvation with fear and trembling, lest we slip, as the text says, or drift away, because God performed signs, miracles, and wonders, not only in favor of the people of Israel, and all of those miracles and wonders are written in the Bible, but He also, through the apostles, through the disciples of that time, He performed signs and tremendous miracles, so that He will confirm His word. But today, the greatest miracle that we can experience right now in our lives is to be born again to allow Christ to enter into our lives and change us and transform us and inscribe our names in the book of life. That is the most wonderful, that is the most incredible experience that we can have in this life. We can have a good health, we can have a good economic position, we can have a lot of things. But if we're not saved, if we don't have the salvation of our soul, we are eternally lost. Therefore, we pray to the Lord this morning, all together. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you so much, O God, for the salvation so great that you have given us. Salvation that for us is free, but for which you paid a very high price, shedding your blood, your blood and your life, and giving 100% on that cross, occupying our, our place, because the pay of sin is death, but the a gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we ask that you produce that maturity in us that is so necessary to be able to live Christian lives in victory and powerful and agreeable in your eyes. Lord, keep us from all dangers and all evil as you have always done. And we put our lives in your hands with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. My dear brethren, Let's take advantage of every opportunity that, it present, that comes our ways to talk to people about the love of God. We all know people. We all today will greet neighbors, friends, relatives, uh, co-workers. Let's still not be another, just another day. Let's take advantage on every occasion to tell people that Christ loves them, that He died for them, and that if they want to change their life, the only way to do this is by having Christ in their hearts. Greetings, my dear brethren, with all my heart for all of you. And may the Lord give us all a beautiful day full of victories, full of peace, and that we can fulfill our goal that is to please God. Blessings, my dear brethren, for all of you.